I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us again at the Azure Academy. Today we're talking about ARM templates, specifically how we can use the Azure portal to write a lot of our templates for us. So if you haven't done so already, please do click on the subscribe button and join us here at the Azure Academy, as well as leave us some comments below on any questions you have or something you'd like us to cover in the future. So this question has come about because I have been asked several times by customers, colleagues, and also now on our YouTube channel, which let me show you that. So on the ARM template video series number one, we had a question come in from MBA email, and that was, uh, this is a great series, but I couldn't find out how to export a whole resource group as a template. This question, as I said, I've gotten repeatedly, and I thought that today would be a good time to jump into this because there have been some recent improvements in this area. So let's first go over to the Azure documentation. So in our docs, we'll go to products and then we'll scroll down a little bit to management and governance. And then we'll scroll down a little to the Azure Resource Manager. So what we wanna look at today is really two sections of our doc and that will start with the beginner tutorials. And here we're going to go to number seven, use exported templates. Now you can certainly read through the docs yourself, so I'm not gonna spend time doing that, but I do wanna call out this link that's here in this doc, which is to revise the existing templates. This is probably the biggest obstacle and solution that you need when you're doing exports of templates. Obstacle because there are things that are in the templates as they are exported from Azure or you get them from somewhere else and you need to do some amount of customization to them. And we call that out in this first paragraph. Uh, additionally, there is under the how to section, and export templates, and let's go and look at that. And again, calling out the same thing about uh, our templates here, that the templates probably don't include all of the parameters that you need for reuse, and this is the obstacle. If you understand the ARM code, then you can understand what things are missing, and therefore what the solution is to make it work. So let's take a look at this example resource group that I have. And here I've built out an application, and this is a very simple application just with two Azure VMs, and they are each on their own network, and I've just labeled them here hub and spoke. And I've got a traffic manager profile, as well as a private DNS, some NSGs, and a public DNS. And let me show you what this app does. So you've probably seen this before if you've seen our, our videos in our ARM template series. This is that web server script that I've referenced several times. And I've got this in a traffic manager profile that is location based. So I have this particular session running through my VPN so I can be somewhere else in the world as well as I've got this one for where I am locally. And you can see that a different server underneath the traffic manager has responded to each of my web requests. So it's a location based web application that is across multiple Azure regions. And those would be the regions that are here in our resource group. So we've got a VM in East US and another one in East US too. And then we've also got our private DNS and that is set up to use a network link so that our VMs that are in our hub and spoke network can be registered automatically, which they are. There's our internal IP addresses. Then we've also got those registered through our public DNS so that the public IP address, whatever that happens to be when the system comes online, registers with this IP address in our public DNS portal so that we can easily reach our VMs. So now the question is, how can we export this and reuse it? The very first thing in our resource group, and this is available in every resource group that you are in, is this export templates button. So if we click this, this button will basically take everything that is in this resource group and we can reuse it. So you could either copy this code, save it to your GitHub or use something like Visual Studio, VS Code, Notepad++, or just the Azure portal to store this code, edit it and reuse it. There is also a deploy button right up top. And so I'll hit deploy and this is basically it, right? Problem solved. So now we can export stuff from our template. Hey, it's even got our values already written for us. We're good to go. But it's not quite that simple because remember we have things that we have to edit in order to make this reusable and that depends really on the resources themselves. So let's take a look at what this template is and what the things are that are in it 
and that'll tell us what we need to add. So very first thing is we have something here calling out my extension and it's got a secure string. Okay, so I'm not sure what goes in there yet. We'll come back to that. And then we've got uh, some things that do have values and these are the values that we saw on the last screen and they've got those because they are the default value, but we can provide other inputs if we want to. So scrolling down a little bit more, we get into some of our resources and I'll just use our outline over here on the left. We'll come down to our virtual machines and we can see in our virtual machine that we'll be deploying this to an availability zone and we have a particular size and we have a particular image that we're using. The point that the docs were making is if, for example, you wanted a different VM size, so you would have to edit this template to then change the VM size to say maybe something like a D1. All right, so I particularly like B2MS, so I'm okay with that. But if you want other options, you don't have them. You've got to write them. Same thing that we come down here for the managed disk. Notice that this has a managed disk ID. The problem we're going to have if we try to redeploy this template because this disk is already in use by the existing VM. So in order to make this work, we have to get rid of this and let Azure provision a new disk. When we provision that new disk, we also have this name. That doesn't fit with my naming standard. So I want to edit that to make it fit with my naming standard. Now we have another issue, and that is that we have a field missing here. And again, you need to know what virtual machine ARM code looks like to know this. But what we're missing here is a password. So now we have another problem. I technically could write in some kind of password. However, ARM is not going to accept this because this value needs to be a secure string. So I can't use this kind of input. I have to write a new input parameter using a secured string, kind of like this. And now I have to add that parameter at the very top. So let's go up to our parameter section. So now we've got our password as an input parameter. So if I hit save here, we get a new field. So now we can type in our password. And there are other things that are going to happen along the way that are going to make this more and more complicated. Let's take a look at this from another perspective. So we're going to start off by selecting our networking components. So we'll sort things by type and we'll give ourselves a little more screen room and we'll select our DNS zone and we'll pick our private zone, our public IPs, traffic manager and our virtual networks. And now we have this button at the top, which has recently been added for exporting templates. So I'll click that and now instead of everything that was in our resource group, we just have the resources that we have selected. So I'm just going to take this just as it is and I'm going to go to deploy. Now, again, if I try to deploy this exactly as I've got it, it's not going to work in the same resource group because those resources already exist. The template would effectively do nothing. So I need to select a different resource group. And so here in BB test, I actually have nothing at the moment. And let me prove that to you. So here I've got open in the Azure portal app. I've got uh, my BB test resource group and it is currently empty. So we'll deploy these resources here. And again, I could go through the parameters here and just change the names from AA to BB so it matches my naming convention. But I actually want to show you that edit inside the template itself. So in the ARM template, I will just press Control H and that'll bring up the find and replace. And I'll put in AA and replace that with BB. And then I'll push this button to replace all. There we go. And now I will save. And it has changed all of my parameters for me. And then I will agree to the terms and hit purchase. All right, so that deployment will be done in a moment. So we see that the deployment's finished and we have had a problem, but in general, it looks like everything worked. And uh, this is kind of a, a known issue if you try to redeploy a DNS zone. Um, it's uh, something to do with the name server, but it did deploy the zone itself. So let's take a look at what we've got. And I've sorted things by type here so we could see that yes, every one of those resources did in fact deploy. And in our private DNS zone, we've got our two entries for our virtual machines, as well as in our public zone, we've got those set up and our traffic manager profile with our endpoints already set up. Now they are in a degraded status. That is because these public IPs do not have VMs attached to them. Now let's take a virtual machine from our original environment and let's click all of these VM1 related items and then we'll hit export template. And there's the list of just our stuff that we selected. So we'll just use the Azure portals deploy button again. 
and we'll select our BB test resource group. And we've got to edit our parameters here or our template. There are a few things that we have to edit here in order to be able to reuse what we've already got. Now, as we're looking down at the virtual machine itself, we do have a manage disk ID that is already here. Now, this points back to, as I said, the original OS disk that is currently attached to this VM. So in order to make this usable, we have to get rid of this line and also this comma. So now what we're telling Azure is, I want you to create a new disk based on this image reference. And that could be also a custom image reference. And then we have a name here for our OS disk. So I just want it to be virtual machine name underscore OS disk. And then notice again that our password parameter is missing. Why would that happen? Well, that's because we don't wanna store passwords in Azure. So to store a password, in your ARM template code is not a good practice at all. To do this instead, what you should use is either a secure string input or a key vault reference. So either way, we need to add a admin password parameter. Okay, and there's our parameter. And then we've got to add it as an input parameter. So we'll add that up here. Okay, so we've added that as a secure string. And we'll come back to that in a second. But for the moment here, I'm just gonna put in a password. And now we have this extension custom script that we have to figure out what to do with. So we did have a custom script extension. That's what added the web server role to my VM. So let me hit edit template here. And I know that the script extension is a part of the VM, um, but the way that the portal has segmented things, it's actually the next item underneath the VM. So that might help you to find it a little bit easier. So the custom script extension here, what it's going to do is use a file that is at this location, and then it's going to give some kind of command to that file, all right? Now, so the questions that we have to ask are, is this file something that is still reachable right now so that we can do a build? So that's easy enough to test. So we'll copy that, and I will open a new browser tab, and we'll paste that in. And yes, indeed, there is our AA install IIS, so that's good to go. So we can reach the file. Now we need the command to execute so that we can run the file and install it. So in this case, we'll go back to our parameters. And I know we need to run PowerShell, but you see here that this is encrypted. And that's because if we go back to our template and we look at our input parameters, our custom extension is using a secure string. So what I would like instead is I'd like to be able to see what I'm typing. So I'm gonna get rid of that input parameter completely, go back to my script extension and just put in the command right here. So our command is going to be to run PowerShell with the flag of execution policy is unrestricted, calling the file aa-install underscore iis.ps1. So with that, we should be able to run this. However, if you're going to save this and reuse it, then of course there's more ways that we can innovate, which we'll get into in a moment. So we've changed the names of these input parameters. So let's hit purchase and that build will take a minute or two. So we finished that deployment and let's check it out in our BB test resource group. We'll sort by type and we can see that everything looks like it has deployed successfully. So opening the VM itself, we can see we've got a public IP address attached to it, copying that and opening that up. And we see that that works. So we can use this kind of methodology to be able to take things from one resource group to another. However, this is not the recommended way that I would do things like taking a production resource group and deploying all those resources again. Reason for that is this is not the best approach to ARM templates. For example, uh, if we look at what we've already deployed and we look at the template itself, from my way of, of looking at templates, this is all kind of inelegant. So I would prefer a, a, a better written solution than this. So we can take these kinds of things, test them and in a quick manner in Azure using the export function. And then once we like generally what we've built, then we need to take this to another level. So let's open Visual Studio. And I've got the two examples that we went over. So there's our network as well as the VM. So let's create a new folder for this. 
and we'll just call it the number three and it's the end state that we're actually looking for and so I'll add a new templates file so now we're starting off with a blank template where's the best place to get all the information we want back in the Azure portal so let's go to our original resource group and then right back where we started we'll click on export templates and we'll take everything so this time we'll copy it all and then we'll go back to Visual Studio now we'll just do a select all and paste. And now we have to make this, like I said, more elegant, rename a lot of these things to make them work better for our solution. So this is what I've done with this particular template. And of course you can do this in a thousand different ways. So how you choose to do this is going to be possibly a little different. So what I've done first of all is I have cleaned up the input parameters. I basically made it very, very simple. Just give me the IP address, what prefix you want, username and password for your particular VMs, and then what size you want, which would be small, medium, or large. So now that you have very, very simple inputs, anybody can deploy this solution and uh, I've also created several variables here that parse uh, some of the requirements for building things since I'm building two virtual networks but doing it through a single resource I'm using copy indexing which is all looking back at my variable for vnet info so this is going to be vnet number one and then this will be vnet number two and so since it's a hub I'm adding a firewall subnet a bastion subnet and a gateway and then in the spoke where the application is we have a web app and database subnet now we have all the settings for our DNS public zone private zone traffic manager and then the VMs themselves a far cry from where we started with this template that doesn't look very uh, easy to use and but you have to again begin with the end in mind know what it is that you want and then understand each component as you're going through the process so that you can take them from the portal where you've built a working app and then translate that into something that is not only reusable but then you can expand on improve and innovate so that you can build more solutions from there so I hope that you've enjoyed looking at the options that we have for exporting things from the Azure portal and have it do a lot of the work to start writing our templates. And then from there, we can further innovate and make the templates uh, even better and more specific to our use cases and our applications. So if you thought this video was good, please click on that like button as well as while you're down there, click on the subscribe button if you haven't done that already and join us here at the Azure Academy and give us some comments down below again on any questions that you have or anything you'd like us to do for a future video and like I said in the beginning this particular video was a request that somebody put out there and we do read all of the comments and finally click on the notification icon and then you can get a email when our videos come out which is roughly once a week and we will see you in the next video Happy learning.